ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد I welcome all of you and we're going to begin a chapter, a new chapter from the Al-Mulakhas Al-Fiqhi tonight of our, our, our Shaykh Al-Allama Al-Doktor Salih bin Fawzan Al-Fawzan Hafidahu Allah Ta'ala wa matta'ahu bil-sahha wa al-afiyah wa ghafara lahu wa liwalidayhu wa lil-muslimin wa lil-muslimat Last chapter of, of marriage of nikah ahkam al-nikah. Fi kitab al-nikah, the section in which the Sheikh he brings a, a lot of information about marriage. <coughs> no doubt this uh, topic is uh, of extreme importance. And that is if uh, the husband and the wife they are successful in their marriage uh, they will have serenity and uh, stability and they will be successful and therefore they can aid themselves and aid others a happy family a happy husband and wife they can give a lot to their family first and to the community Whereas a sad husband and wife going through trouble, fighting all the time, they need to help themselves, not along waiting for them to help others. And we all know those amongst us who have been through this or those who Allah saved them from the discord and marriage discord and chaos that all it brings about, we all know it, it, it pay big toll on, on the individuals themselves, on the man and the woman, and especially on children. Especially on children. Imagine the children that they grow up in a broken family, nothing but fighting and chaos and no stability, no serenity, no love, no harmony. How are they going to grow up? That's why it's important for us, those who are married, pay attention to these classes. Let us uh, take notes. Let us uh, be sincere and make some corrections and uh, some changes. If we need to make some changes, remember, we're human. We have shortcomings. Uh, we have deficiencies. And... Uh, Therefore, there is always a room for rectification. So, and those who are not married yet, inshallah, this class will help you. Will help all of you. Rather, it will help all of us. Those who are not married yet, inshallah, it will start, alhamdulillah, strong upon these principles and guidelines that we're going to learn, inshallah, ta'ala throughout this classes. May Allah reward our noble Sheikh Al-Allam Al-Doktor Salah Al-Fawzan, the greatest reward. Likewise, all of his brothers, the Mashayikh and the Ulama of Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jama'ah and the students of knowledge and all those who they disseminate the Sunnah, disseminate the Tawheed and call the people to the truth, to that which is right. Babun Fi Ahkam al There is uh, many chapters here to be exact like some 12 chapters in this section of nikah we start by the what the sheikh started with babun fi ahkam nikah rulings on marriage fi the sheikh gave a, an introduction before he brings certain points uh, he says that هذا الموضوع له أهمية بالغة 
هذا الموضوع يعني موضوع النكاح له أهمية بالغة جعلت الفقهاء يجعلون له في مصنفاتهم مكانا رحبا يفصلون فيه أحكامه ويوضحون فيه مقاصده وآثاره لأنه مشروع في الكتاب والسنة والإجماع And I will read from the translation as you know الملخص الفقهي والحمد لله is translated They say marriage is a serious and crucial subject Marriage is a serious and a crucial subject that made the fuqaha The fuqaha are the ulama that does study the fiqh the ulama that they compile books on fiqh like this one, Mulakhas al fiqh. So you find many sections, like the, the first section always in the books of, of, the, of fiqh is Tahara. Tahara, which is a part or an entrance, if you know, Madhal to the Salat, to the big section of the, the Salat. Likewise, they have the section of the Zakat of uh, fasting, hajj, and the like. And then they have this as well, marriage, and of course, divorce, and uh, which this is another section of divorce that will come after this one, and all what uh, we need to know as well. <clears throat> it says, so marriage is a, cru- is a serious and a crucial subject matter that made the scholars of fiqh dedicate great parts of their volumes for it explaining its rulings as well as its purpose and virtues. They explain the rulings, but also the purpose behind marriage, the virtues of marriage. And this is because marriage is ordained through the Qur'an. There are texts in the Qur'an, also in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and the consensus of the ulama. قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في سورة النساء فانكحوا ما طاب لكم من النساء مثنى وثلاث ورباع In سورة النساء verse number 3 Then marry those that please you of other women two or three or four قال ولما ذكر النساء التي يحرم تزوج منهن قال تعالى كذلك في سورة النساء وأحل لكم ما وراء ذلكم أن تبتغوا بأموالكم محسنين غير مسافحين شيخ صالح الفوزان يسوز عند القرآن الله سبحانه وتعالى when he mentioned the women that are prohibited and we're going to get to that الحمد لله the sheikh is going to mention where are the women that is prohibited for a man to marry there are women that is prohibited for a man to marry any one of them so when Allah mentions the, the women that uh, one is prohibited to marry, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 24 of Surah An-Nisa, and lawful to you are all others beyond these that they were mentioned. Okay? Provided that you seek them in marriage, in marriage with the dowry from your property. Desiring chastity, not a law for sexual intercourse. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hatha ala zawaj wa raghaba fih faqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya ma'ashara al-shabab man istata'a minkum ul-ba'a fal yatazawaj fa innahu aghaddu lil-basar wa ahsanu lil-farj الحديث متفق عليه من حديث ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه عند البخاري ومسلم. Also in the Sunnah you will find that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم exhorted people to marry and made marriage recommendable. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم recommend that the people get married, especially the youth. As we have in this hadith that is agreed upon by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam al-Muslim rahimahumullah on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu. The famous hadith we heard so many times in the khutbahs, in the sermons. Whenever there is a, a topic on marriage, you will hear this hadith. O young people, 
Whoever among you has the ability to marry should do so. Should go ahead and marry. Don't delay. And then yet this clear hadith you find some young men, young brothers, they have the ability to establish a, a household and they do not get married. Marriage is good as we all know the hikam. There is so many hikam, alhamdulillah, and virtues of marriage that's going to follow. You're going to see the virtues. Here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi addressing the young, all young people, whoever among you has the ability to marry should marry. For it, meaning the marriage, for it helps in lowering one's gaze and guarding one's chastity. Aina. Also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, تزوجوا الودود الولود فإني مكاثر بكم الأمم يوم القيامة الحديث أخرجه أبو داود والنسائي وصححه الألباني رحمه الله في آداب الزفاف وكذلك في صحيح سنن أبو داود وفي صحيح سنن النسائي رحمهم الله Also, Sheikh Salah al-Fawzani mentioned this hadith that is uh, collected by Imam Abu Dawood and Nasai and Imam al-Albani rahimahu ta'ala graded it sound, sahih, authentic hadith in his very beneficial book actually uh, that is very much needed for anyone, those who are married already and those who are on the path of getting married, Adab uh, al-Zifaf, the etiquettes of getting married. Sheikh al-Albani has a great book, Rahimahullah. And by the way, Sheikh al-Albani, Muhammad Nasr al-Din, is one of the great scholars of our era, Rahimahullah. Rather, Sheikh bin Baz, Rahimahullah, he says he's the mujaddid. If there is a mujaddid of this time, he said he should be al-Imam al-Albani. And he's a, he's a great imam, especially in hadith. Had al-Rajul nafa' Allah bihi الإسلام والمسلمين خدم السنة خدمة سبحان الله أسأل الله أن يثيبه عليها خير الجزاء ديسمان الإمام الألباني رحمه الله uh, has uh, benefited the Muslims in a great way especially in the field of hadith of course he was strong in عقيدة and fiqh and tawheed and especially in the fields and the science of hadith, the man has a, a great elaboration in the hadith and how he spent his life, not just part of it, serving the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his books speak for his efforts and for his, for, they speak for him, for, for, for him on his behalf. Rahimahullah. He died some 16 years ago in the same year that another great mountain of knowledge died also uh, Sheikh Al-Imam Ibn Baz Rahimahullah. They died both of them in the same year and then shortly after that followed by uh, Sheikh Abu Uthaymin also he died Rahimahullah Jami'an and a year after that was another great Imam from Yemen uh, Sheikh Al-Allama Muqbil ibn Hadi al-Wadi'i May Allah have mercy on them all uh, So this hadith that Imam al-Albani authenticated it in Adab al-Zifaf Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says marry women who are loving and very prolific meaning they give children they give birth uh, for I shall be proud of the great number of you, meaning the Muslim nation, in comparison with other nations on the day of resurrection. First of all, we mentioned this hadith here that uh, Imam al-Albani authenticated in Adab al-Zifaf, but also he authenticated it, or actually he said, Hassan Sahih, Hassan Sahih in Sunan al-Nasai. The ulama, when they mention uh, the hadith, it is Hassan and Sahih. How we understand that the hadith can be Hassan and Sahih. One thing you should know that this hadith is authentic. Because both Al-Sahih and Hassan, you can act upon this hadith. 
حديث صحيح حديث حسن but how you understand that the hadith is hasan and sahih the ulama they mention that you will find that the route in the, the hadith some, some of those routes uh, they are sahih sound authentic while other route is hasan that's why they say hasan sahih the hadith that is in imam in, in sunan al-nasai i'm going to read to you that hadith and also it is in sahih abu dawood قال الإمام النسائي في سننه باب كراهية تزويج العقيم uh, because here the Prophet صلى الله عليه the women that are prolific meaning they give children and somebody may want to ask how would a, would a person know that the woman is pro- prolific and even marry her right is this is a good question what do you think a man this woman she's a virgin for for instance right and young. So how would he know that she's prolific? She's, she's going to give him a lot of children. Huh? Remember this question, okay? Remember it. Let me read to you the hadith. Why you understand this? Because look, look at the tabweeb. Look how the ulama, subhanAllah, the fiqh that Allah has given them. Al-Imam al-Nasai, under this hadith, because that hadith, in which the Prophet ﷺ, he gave an order, marry the women who are what? Loving, wadud. She's a nice, easy woman. Doesn't have attitudes and the like. She's easy going. He says, marry those ones. Not only that, that's one of the qualities. The other qualities is she's what? Al-walud. Means she's prolific. She give, she give birth. Okay? By Allah's leave, be idnillah, of course. Tayyib, is it now haram to marry the woman that is not wadud walud? Hmm? Is this is wajib? You have to marry only those. That's why the fiqh of Imam al Nasa'i he says karahiyat tazwij al aqim. It is disliked to marry the woman that is not prolific. The woman that is what? Aqim, the one that cannot bear children. What is it? Baron, Aina, Baron, Zakallah. So he said he's disliked. So you will know that it's not haram, okay? No. قال الإمام النسائي رحمه الله أخبرنا عبد الرحمن بن خالد قال حدثنا يزيد بن هارون قال أنبأنا المستسلم بن سعيد عن منصور بن زادان عن معاوية بن قرة عن معقل بن يسار قال This is a chain of narration because the أئمة they bring a chain of narration the chain of narration is very important because uh, that's what determine one of the ways you determine hadith is sahih or weak or this or that. Okay, based on the man of the narration. Uh, so he says, "Jaa rajul ila Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam faqal." A man came to the messenger of Allah. Says, "This is a man came to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." And as we know, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi was very humble, modest, approachable. People come and talk to him, alhamdulillah. No bodyguards or nothing, or people are afraid because of some people, just because of the attitude they have and the way uh, they act and they go by their lives. People, they give a people an idea that don't talk to me. Alhamdulillah. Prophet Sallallahu was very humble. Kind, gentle, merciful, nice, easy to talk to, to approach. Anybody can talk to him. Not just high status people. Poor people talk to him. Children talk to him. Uh, even a slave, uh, in a narration, he says a slave girl will come and, 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 and walk with the process. I mean, he walk while she's asking the question and the like. Now. Nah. So here is a man came and messaged and asked the messenger a rajul. A man came and he said to the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This man he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, meaning he found this woman, okay? He finds this woman that death a hasab or mansab. She's from a, a noble family, 
and uh, well-off family, okay? But, he says, but she's barren. He doesn't give children. Okay? أَفَأَتَزَوَّجُهَا So this man came and he asked the Prophet ﷺ, Shall I marry her? فَنَهَاهَ Prophet ﷺ said, No. Don't marry her. ثُمَّ أَتَاهُ الثَّانِيَ فَنَهَاهَ Then this man, he came again and asked about that woman. Prophet ﷺ said to him, No. ثُمَّ أَتَاهُ الثَّالِثَ Then that man came for the third time. Prophet ﷺ, فَنَهَا Prophet ﷺ still said to him, No. And then he said, تَزَوَّجُوا الْوَلُودَ الْوَدُودَ فَإِنِّي مُكَاثِرٌ بِكُمْ Then he says, See, this is the reason of this hadith. There's a story behind it. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Marry الْوَدُودَ الْوَدُودَ once again, we mention Al-Wadud is the loving, caring woman. That uh, she knows because she knows her religion. She fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she want to do what is pleasing to Allah. She make it her priority. Her husband is priority in the house. Whenever the husband comes in, she make herself available and do all what is pleasing to Allah, that which is halal to please her husband. This is Al-Wadud. The ulama, they says, because Al-Wadud, she be loved by the husband. See, a nice woman, caring woman, friendly, nice, happy woman, the husband will love her. And will keep her. He can even wait until he goes back home. He will miss her wherever he go, because he, she treat him nicely. She treat him very nice. And that's good for him, and it's good for her. Because she's, she was commanded to be good and nice to her husband. And she be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a great reward for being a good wife. But also she will be rewarded by her husband as well, because he's going to appreciate her kindness and gentleness and love, and he will take good care of her. That's a good man. Okay? Now, uh, Walwalud, that is pro, pro, prolific, the woman that gives children. Tayyib, how would a person know, a man he wants to get married, okay? And, uh, all right, how would the man know that this woman is Walud? Walud, now I'm sorry, you raise your hand. Uh, uh. Uh-huh. كيف ينظر يعني؟ نعم. حسين؟ ها؟ حسين؟ سيد الإنجليز هذا. أي نعم. That's that's one of the answers. There's another way. One of the ways is that if a person wants to apply this hadith, before he marry a woman, he now he's looking. Of course, you look for the woman that have the deen. Okay, the religion. So you, you put the hadith together. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says in another hadith, فَضْفَرْ بِدَاتِ din. Okay, the women marry for her merit, for her beauty, for her lineage, for her status in the community and wealth and the like, and for her firmness upon the religion. So you marry the one with the religion, but now also you want to marry a woman that uh, give children. Huh? That's pro, 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 prolific. Okay? I'm having trouble saying this word. If I said something else, correct me on the spot, okay? Now, with a smile. It's okay, I don't mind. You can smile at my mistakes, no problem with me. But just correct me so we don't go with, with the mistake, okay? Hey, now. Don't say, oh, maybe Abu Muhammad knows more than us. This is English. I don't know better than you in English, okay? English is my third uh, language, by the way, not even the second. Okay, so that's my third language. So we have first and this, okay? So if I made a mistake, not accent. I know I have a heavy accent, but I'm talking about something that really changed the meaning, okay? If I say a word that you don't understand, because sometimes, it happens sometimes. In my house, I say something, and even my son, Idris, correct me. He's like, Abi, what's that? 
Sometimes they'll be talking to them and they say something in French. And they, the kids, subhanAllah, the children, they smart. They get, hey, wait a minute, what did you just say? I'm like, but then now when he told me, I say it in English. He's like, no, no, you didn't say that. You said something else. So be better than Idris, okay? Inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair. And you're older enough than him. So that's one way. How would a man know that this woman can give children? He looks at her fa- in the women in her family. Okay? Her mother. The mother, she has 11 children or something. Alhamdulillah. Her aunties too. Her sister, she has, maybe she has some older sister married. Oh, this one have seven children. These have nine. These have 13. These have 12. So that's usually she will be on the same path. Okay? Yes. No, no, no. The woman that give birth to children, meaning when she get married, she get pregnant and Fertile, yeah. (laughs) Huh? Maybe you can do that too. Maybe yes. Since you suggest that, yes. Why, if she if she has some issues or something, usually they we're going to learn that in another chapter that uh, any defects or or whatever that the people have, they should, they should mention that, okay? They should mention. And we're going to learn that. But it's like Allah khair for mentioning that. The second way is what? How to know? Naam? It's easy. Ahsant. She's already married before and she has children. You see, she already married and maybe the husband died. Or she was divorced for whatever reason. Okay? But now she already, she's, she has children, okay? Maybe she got four, she got five, she got three, more or less. She's been married, but she has children. Aina. Qala al-Shaykh Salih Havidahullah, wal-nikahu yatarattabu alayhi masalihu azima. Now the Sheikh is going to enumerate and mention many points. Uh, Highlighting the many virtues of marriage. There are so many virtues of marriage, Akhwan. Naam. Minha, now, awalan, baqa'un nasli al-bashari. Wa takthiru adad al-muslimin. Wa ighadatu al-kuffari bi injabi al-mujahideen fi sabiillah. Wa al-mudafi'een an dini. He says, by marriage... Now, marriage involves keeping the existence of the human race. Okay? People, they get married, and women get pregnant, and then they have babies. These babies, they grow up, and they get married again. So it keeps the existence of the human race, increasing the number of Muslims. So now, in general, marriage increases and keeps the human race. But, Increase also the numbers of the Muslims, causing annoyance to the disbelievers through the procreation of those striving in the cause of Allah, as well as those defending his religion, meaning Islam. That's number one. Number two, إِعْفَافُ الفروج وَإِحْسَانُهَا وَصِيَانَتُهَا مِنَ الْإِسْتِمْتَاعِ المحرم. الذي يفسد المجتمعات البشرية. Marriage leads to maintaining chastity and keeping away from unlawful sexual intercourse that ruins human communities. Now, and that's true. Many problems that face the uh, Western communities and Allah almost now it's been uh, sent abroad and shipped to some Muslim countries even, that these diseases, the, uh, all the type of diseases, well, yeah, the, what do you call them? Give me some examples. Yeah, the STDs, whatever. The AIDS, 
and many many diseases will iyadu billah the results from this from uh, fornication and zina and the like marriage is uh, a protection for the communities from those diseases ay na wa minha number 3 right the point qiyam az-zawj ala al-mar'a bil-ri'ayah wal infaq قال تعالى الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفق من أموالهم في سورة النساء Likewise from these many virtues of marriage uh, marriage involves the responsibility of men towards women and, in, and that, in, that includes sheltering them and providing for them As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says men are in charge of women by right of what qualities Allah has given one over the other and what they spend for maintenance from their wealth so in islam is the is the man who maintain the woman the woman she's uh, protected and uh, well cared for and maintained when she's a little by her parents by her by her father grandfather by her uncles if she has uh, uh, older brothers everybody take care of the woman allahu akbar she's protected maintained cared for ayna and uh, and even even until she get married whether she get married before she's 18 or 21 or after that now if she get married the responsibility increased she still cared for by her father brothers and but the responsibility for on the husband not like in other countries or other laws will iyad billah the woman she hit 18 she's in her own even the parents they tell her that they keep reminding her hey you got 3 years you better start packing all right i'm serious you got 3 months Actually, maybe before that, six months, they already take the bedroom from her. You know, and give it to the one that is in 11 cycle. Not in Islam. Now this woman, that's why some women, they know, they don't even wait until they're 18. 12, they're already on the run. Hey now. 13, they're already in jail. They're already in trouble. They already got a lot of problems. What are you going to expect? Hey now. By Islam, alhamdulillah, the woman, she's protected. She stay home. She want to go somewhere. Her husband make himself available to take her. Her brother make himself available. Her uncle, her grandfather, Allahu Akbar. She's like a princess. She can choose. I want to ride with you today. I want to ride my brother. Allahu Akbar, she has so many choices. She's not alone, stranded, nobody there. No, anything she needs. Any support, financial support, mental support, anything, education, she has so many choices to choose from. In the West, she's on her own. And she'd be on the street uh, facing the danger of many wolves. And they don't want no good for her. They just look at her as a product uh, uh, of, en- of enjo- enjoyment to fulfill their wickedness. Wallahu al-musta'an. Alhamdulillah for Islam. Wa minha, na'am, husul al-sakan wal-unsi bayna al-zawjain wa husul al-raha al-nafsiyya. Qala ta'ala wa min ayatihi an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwaj li tasakunu ilayha. Wa qala ta'ala fi surat al-a'raf, hadhi surat al-rum, huwa al-ladhi khalaqa lakum min nafsin wahida wa ja'ala minha zawjaha li yasakuna ilayha. Likewise, from the many verses of marriage in Islam, marriage creates an atmosphere of tranquility, serenity, peace, mutual concord and security, and spiritual comfort between both husband and wife. SubhanAllah. That's what we need. Like, for example, sometimes you, you may have families, members, family members that are not Muslims. They're like, why do you want to get married? You say, hey, I'm getting married, or I already get married. Like, why do you want to get married? Why? Trouble? 
Why you want to set yourself up? They think marriage, anybody who gets married, they set themselves up. Now you tell them, no, marriage is different in Islam. Why is it different? No, it's not different. Now you tell them, look, you have a minute? Here. Or if they don't have a minute at that moment, send them a text. Some people don't want to hear, they can read. Give them a pamphlet, a CD they can listen to. You, you need to know these people. What, some people, they want conversation. Talk to them. Some people, they don't. They're not like that. They just want to read. Give them a book to read on Zifaf. If you know them level, if they can read, you see them always with big books, give them a big book to read. I know. But if they are just people they don't read much, give them a, a little bit, a sentence or two. I know. Marriage creates an atmosphere of tranquility, mutual concord, security, and spiritual comfort between both husband and wife. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Rum verse 21, which is a translation of what Allah says, and of his signs is that he created for you from yourselves mates that you may find tranquility in them. Allah Akbar. Number two, or the ayah number two that the Shaykh mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf, ayah 189. It is he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who created you from one soul and created from it its mate that he may dwell in security with her. Ayna. And we as, as Muslims, those who are monks as married, yes, we, we can have security, we can have comfort, we can have serenity and peace in our marriages, but with the condition that we apply, we apply the deen of Allah in our lives, both husband and wife. If we apply the advice that the ulama, they bring us in the lights of what Allah has legislated for us in the Quran and Sunnah, it's guarantees security, serenity, peace, and the like. وَمِنْهَا نعم أنه حماية للمجتمعات البشرية من الوقوع في الفواحش الخلقية التي تهدم الأخلاق وتقضي على الفضيلة From the many verses of marriage in Islam Marriage is a means of keeping the human communities from being indulged in immoralities that ruin morals and eliminate virtue. And that's what exactly happening in so many communities and societies who they don't have Islam. The, the kuffar, they just do whatever you want to do. They don't have account for anybody, no respect for anyone. And what happened? Zina and this and that, immoralities, will billah, that ruin the morals and eliminate the virtues. وَمِنْهَا حِفْظُ الْأَنْسَابِ وَمِنْهَا حِفْظُ الْأَنْسَابِ وَتَرَابُطَ الْقَرَابَ وَالْأَرْحَامِ بَعْدُهَا بِبَعْدُ وَقِيَامِ الْأُسَرِ الشَّرِيفَ الَّتِي تَسُودُهَا الرَّحْمَةِ وَالصِّلَ وَالنُّصْرَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ Likewise, from the many virtues of marriage in Islam, marriage is a means of preserving progeny keeping blood relations and establishing honorable families involving mercy, unity, and support in what is right. Allah Akbar. That's what marriage is about. Mercy has to be established. Unity, united upon the haqq, upon the truth, and support one another upon the truth as well. Likewise, from the many virtues of marriage, uh, <coughs> Likewise, marriage raises man above leading animal life and enables him to lead an honorable human life. Our noble scholars you mentioned this, they says unfortunately some human beings they even surpass the animals. Some animals they stay to themselves, they stay in their uh, flock and and some animals they even faithful to their mates, defend them and protect them, fight for them, put their lives. But some human they don't care. 
A woman become a product. So it doesn't matter what we wish she is, or what's happened to her. No responsibility, no accounting whatsoever, no gheira, no jealousy. Because women themselves, they put themselves in that position. They become, put themselves in so cheap position. What is the value? They lost in so, so many societies, especially in the Western societies. It's, it's amazing that uh, a man can fulfill his desires with a woman just like that. Like that. One little conversation of two minutes, and that's all it takes. That's it. Nothing. He doesn't have to spend nothing a dime. But the same person uh, on a driveway get a small French fries at McDonald's uh, and then when he gets to the window he has no money. What are they going to say? He can't get no French fries from McDonald's. But a woman, no problem. They're available. Not in Islam. A woman is protected. Uh, you want to got to do it the right way. You got to come from the front door. You better knock three times. Sunnah. You got to talk to her father. If the father is not available or dead or whatever, you got to talk to someone who is a senior uh, person in the family, grandfather or uncle or older brother. If she doesn't have none of those, you got to go deal with the judge. Allah Akbar, the Muslim judge. Not just like pick up any woman and then two weeks later with another one and uh, fitna. Fitna. And they wonder why they have all these problems. Uh, all these people having so many serious problems because of this. And the solution is in Islam. The solution is in Islam. <coughs> قال الشيخ إلى غير ذلك من المصالح العظيمة التي تترتب على النكاح الشرعي الشريف النظيف القائم على كتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. After mentioning these uh, virtues, he said there are so many other virtues of lawful, honorable marriage, which is based on the instructions of the noble book of Allah, the Quran, and the Sunnah of his Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Now, these are only a few the Shaykh he, he presents us with, Jazawallah Khairan, says, but there is so many other virtues of what? Of lawful, honorable marriage, which is based on the instructions of the noble book of Allah, the Quran, and the sunnah of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So after bringing these virtues of marriage in Islam, the Shaykh he says, there is so many others virtues of lawful, honorable marriage, which is based on the instructions of the noble book of Allah, the Quran, and the Sunnah of His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then the Shaykh went to say that marriage is a legal contract enabling each spouse to have lawful enjoyment of the other. That's what marriage is in Islam. النكاح عقد شرعي يقتدي حل استمتاع كل من الزوجين بالآخر كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم استوسوا بالنساء خيرا فإنهن عوان عندكم that marriage once again I repeat that that marriage is a legal contract it is legal in Islam الحمد لله enabling each spouse to have lawful enjoyment of the other. In support of this, the Prophet ﷺ says, treat women kindly as they are awan, like captives in your houses. So you got to be nice. There is so many. This is one of the a hadith. By the way, this hadith is uh, collected by Imam Ibn Majah uh, and Tirmidhi and the uh, Imam al-Albani said this hadith is Hassan Hassanah al-Albani so this is a sound hadith uh, in Sahih ibn Majah and also in uh, in al-Irwa in al-Irwa this is one of the many hadith and of course and we have ayahs also that 
uh, command us men to treat uh, the women kindly and to be nice and the like. Inshallah ta'ala, we're going to stop here for today's class. We continue on next uh, class on Monday. هذا وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. For the remaining time, let us review, inshallah. Somebody wants something you didn't give us, review, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, how important, for instance, this subject matter? How important for us to learn about marriage and the rulings of marriage and the like? Now, is extremely important. Now, now, huh? You, you just get here. The Sheikh didn't say that. The Sheikh didn't say that. So we try to review what we learned today. Alhamdulillah, what the Sheikh mentioned. Inshallah, Taala. Now, why is so important? What shows that is important? Because the fuqaha, huh? Naam. Hey, Ant. Hey. Ahsant. Hassasulahu. Naam. Because you find the ulama, the scholars of fiqh, they have sections in their books about marriage. What they mention in those sections of marriage? What they talk about what? Huh? <laughs> what they mention? Ainam. Ainam. What they mention in those chapters? Naam Hussein. The virtues. Ainam. The virtues of marriage. Because we, we need to know the virtues of marriage. Because we, the more you know the virtues of something, you you hold on to it. Ainam. You want. Ainam. You become valuable to you now. He have a value because he has so many virtues. What else? Huh? Rulings. Ahsan, they mentioned the rulings. Now. Uh, who incited the, the young man to, to be married? Hmm? Rasulullah Hat al Hadith. I know. I Who says that the, the young man huh, is supposed to get married? The Prophet He says, Oh, young man, those amongst you who have the ability, get married. I know. Because it helps lower in the gaze and protect the chastity. In another hadith, or, or in the other narrations along with this hadith, that it says the Prophet ﷺ advised those who cannot get married yet what they should do. To say, do whatever they want? La. What they do? They fast. Because fasting is good. So that's the uh, the young Muslim who wants good for himself. If he's able to get married, should get married. He cannot get married, fast as much as they can. And once again, we give advice. This advice is from the ulama themselves, that they give it to the youth who you find sometimes a young man. He has a job. He's in his 20s, full of energy. And he, he lives in a community where, uh, subhanAllah, women from all different countries and different clothing and Allah, Allah Musta'an. Big fitna, in other terms, big fitna. He lives in a big fitna. He lives alone in an in in apartment, two bedrooms apartment. He alone. Sorry, I'm not. <laughs> if anybody lives like that, 
<laughs> I'm not mentioning no names, right? If anybody is still young and looking to get married, we're not here to point somebody or to offend anybody. We're just to incite the people, okay? If somebody, alhamdulillah, if somebody is young and he has a five-bedroom house, not just two-bedrooms apartment, huh? But he's looking to get married, but he still, mashallah, didn't find the right woman. And then, mashallah, that's good. Now we're not talking about that. We're talking about the one who's like, he's satisfied. He, some even some of them, they say, I want no fitna. Oh, my brothers, they got nothing but problems with the women. I'm going to stay single. Can this, is this is right? No, this is not right. He has to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and apply this hadith. They can get married, get married, yeah. Just make the right choice. Look for the right woman. But the person has to be righteous himself. Be righteous and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fis sahar. While he's fasting, he asks Allah, give sadaqah. If a person is not straight and he's looking for a nice pious sister, her parents, they won't give, it, give her to him anyway. He has to be righteous himself, preserving the fara'id, uh, adorning himself with the good manners of Islam. He, sh- he should read a lot about this topic. Now when he's going to marry a woman, now that woman, she's going to come with different things. She grow up in another area. She has different views. So he has to be ready. Some men, they're not even ready at all. And they're like, why are you acting like that? Why not? She's not you. First, she's a woman, and you're a man. That's, that's an obvious difference. Number two, some brother, they even marry from another area, another country, another, the culture's different, everything different. He's, he's like, why she's acting like that? Oh, try to understand these matters. Oh, that's another topic. By the way, Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam